This is Wardlow from AEW, and you're watching The Joe Cronin Show. A wrestling podcast with attitude. What's up, wrestling fans? How's everybody doing? Uh, we just got back from my other video about the coronavirus and WrestleMania. If you missed that video, the link will pop up at the end of this stream or just or this video or just go back and watch my last video. Um, so here we are. Forget the coronavirus. There's something else to be sad about, and it is Ricochet. We're also going to talk about the Raw ratings in just one second. I'm going to talk about these numbers here that came in from Raw last night. Ricochet, man, is it over? Tons of reports are coming in, and this is stuff that I talked about or speculated on last night on the Raw Review that Vince McMahon broke his toy, broke Ricochet. I mean, the guy loses, you know, gets beat up by Lesnar pretty good. Doesn't have the match that even that some others have had. I mean, I know that Kofi didn't fare well, but, you know, he had a long run and, you know, he... You know, I don't know. They did that to be shocking for, for whatever reason. But Ricochet gets beaten up by um, Lesnar, and you think to yourself, at least I thought to myself, well, uh, you know, 24-7 title. Maybe Ricochet's going to win that title, do something, and he's obviously going to get a win here because he needs to crawl back. Here's your makeup for, hey, thanks for making Lesnar look great. Here's your makeup. That's not the case. Similar to how I think that that's the clear case with you know, the Fiend at WrestleMania with John Cena. He's going to get the Fiend, and he's going to get John Cena, and he's going to get a win to make up for, you know, having to give the belt back to Goldberg, and the story makes sense in a way, and whatever else, whatever. But that was not the case for Ricochet, man, the other night. He got just trounced. I mean, what happened? What in the hell happened? People are shocked about this. People are angry about this. Um... I mean, I, I know that Ricochet sucks on the mic, and I've ranked it on all the superstars. Quite quite honestly, I haven't helped him either. You know, I've been, I've crapped on him. Are you serious? The computer froze. My computer just froze. Am I back? Am I okay? I wonder if there was a glitch. Man, my computer is like, is freezing up. <laughs> it's a brand new computer. What's going on? Guys, I'm, honestly, I think it's XSplit, man. I'm telling you what, this fucking XSplit, has been crapping on itself like you wouldn't believe. It didn't freeze though; it almost froze, and then it then it came back to life. Got to give credit to it for coming back to life. God damn, what has been going on? My other computer never would have lasted through this. You know what I mean? And I built the last one, built the last Duralast. Anyway, whatever. I was trying to figure out well what what is slowing on my computer. But yeah, you know the guy's a mess, and you know I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to say about it, but. Yeah, I, <laughs> I mean, just there's something wrong with everything in, in WWE right now. Yesterday, I put out a video about Drew uh, McIntyre uh, and, you know, Brock Lesnar yells to him, get the belt, get the belt. And then he lifts it up and everybody roars and it was awesome. Some people commented that they thought it was fake. It is not fake. I verified it by looking at the actual raw video from last night. And I went to my YouTube uh, TV app and I watched the show. It's he says it. He yells to him, pick up the belt, and then he does. And you see Drew go, oh, yeah, and he goes over and gets it. I mean, it's obvious. When I saw it on Reddit, I thought somebody doctored it, maybe, and, like, you know, we're giving them views or whatever. But, no, I made sure to verify it. It's 100% true. I still see people doubting it over there, and it's not it's not to be doubted at all. It's real. Um, WWE viewership last night, here's the deal. We I, I thought Raw was... I thought there was a lot of Raw that really was awful, and then I thought there was a lot of Raw that at least they progressed storylines. But looking at the month of February, here's the situation. Looking at the month of February, we got um, February 3rd, 2.1 million, the 10th, 2.3, up to 2.4 in the 17th, uh, then back down to 2.2, 10, and then it went up a little bit to 2.2, 56. Uh so, you know, we're we're basically sitting at this lower end raw score. I mean, this is a bad rating for raw as far as I'm concerned and what raw is capable of. You know, I would think that you could get 3 to 5 million people really around the country should be watching wrestling a month based on the the history of wrestling and what WWE and raw and everything and what they brought to the table. Um, so this is still way below the ball to me. It's drifting a little bit downward again. 
And I think WWE could be in major, major trouble after WrestleMania because the only thing keeping us interested somewhat right now in WWE is WrestleMania. And even that just seems like it seems so spelled out and so obvious what they're doing with everything. I'm not that interested in anything, to be honest. Um, you know, I just, I don't know. We're going to have to see how it plays out. It's one of those things where, like, now I don't even care how they get to WrestleMania. Just get to WrestleMania. It's like, great. I can't wait to see WrestleMania happen because it's fun to always watch WrestleMania, what it's going to look like, what it's going to happen. So let's watch that. But pretty much the week-to-week show again, as it's been, is is a bore to me. But, uh, yeah, there you have the ratings. Uh, 2.256. 2,256,000. What do you guys think about Ricochet, man? Was Ricochet, has he been uh, been done dirty? Is this his fault for not being able to cut a promo? Is this WWE's fault for not just letting the guy shine with what he's good at, which is going out and having great matches? Why isn't this guy in ladder matches and, you know, exciting matches for titles? Put him out. Why, why is um, Andrade and Garza and those guys, why are they able to go out and wrestle? That's what Ricochet should be doing, too. So I don't know why Ricochet isn't put in these situations. But I feel like Vince McMahon at this point feels like you might as well put a mask on him and call him Sin Cara. And that would probably make Vince happier, to be honest. And, um, you know, but that's sad. But that's what I feel like Vince thinks. Like, oh, listen, we already got Grand Metalik. We already got Sin Cara. We've already had these other guys. What's Ricochet going to do? He can't talk. And so I don't know. Maybe that's how Vince feels. But I think Ricochet is one of the best as far as like being in matches that are, you know, can be entertaining and high flying, a high flying guy. I really think that WWE needs to, I don't know, I feel like that cruiserweight would really do well on Raw, but they tried that with 205 Live and people crapped on that. So what is there to do? You know, but I, but I almost wonder if it worked better if you treated the cruiserweight title kind of like the way you treated the Intercontinental title back in the day, and maybe it, it, it'd be nice if there was a cruiserweight, an Intercontinental, and a WWE World Heavyweight Championship, and maybe a United States Championship, and a tag team title, and one woman's belt. Boom, you're done. They need to get rid of three of the belts at least. Um, but uh, there's my opinions on that. Um, I, I hope you write down below what you guys think about that. There's more, though, uh, that's been going on recently. We got NWA Power today. If you guys went and watched that, um, congrats to you. And thanks to anybody who was over there shouting me out. I see people over there <laughs> shouting me out. I don't talk much about it. Last week, the Thunder Rosa stuff depressed me, man. I wanted to see Thunder Rosa go after Molina, and then it didn't happen. I, I understand what they're doing and everything, but I was a little bit shocked about that. Um, but you guys would have to tell me what you think. But I appreciate you shouting me out over there. I don't think NWA likes me very much, so I don't really talk about them. Um, but they've got some good promos and some other things too. But uh, man, it is uh, the end of uh, Ricochet. It feels like. I mean, this guy was absolutely buried the other night. Make no mistake about it. Now it's possible that Vince McMahon, you know, he's done this before. It's possible that Vince McMahon does, you know, go back to Ricochet, or you know, this is like a timeout or whatever you want to call it, a punishment. For, you know, whether, whether he doesn't deserve it, but you know what I mean, according to Vince. You know, so he, Vince could come back to Ricochet. He's done that before in the past. He's done it. Plenty of times, Vince has gone back to somebody, so he could go back to Ricochet. But right now, this is a burial. It's There's nothing... I think everybody is on board with this being a burial. It's not speculation. Everybody's saying it's a burial, and I agree with it, too. The podcast with Cody Rhodes in AEW, on a side note, came out uh, recently. The Uncensored one, or whatever it's called. Uh, unrestricted, I think it was. It was really good. It was a very good podcast. First of all, not only was it a great podcast because Cody Rhodes talked about Star Trek for a while, which just warms my heart, um, and Tony Schiavone too, man. I mean, we would just, oh my God, dude, if I ever could get those guys in a room. I mean, I got Cody on the show and we talked a little bit about Trek, but um, I'm fully pumped up about that, uh, that he is a Star Trek fan and, and that he talked so much about it. And now he likes everything, I feel like. Um, I don't 100%, but he talked about... <laughs> Star Wars fans are a little more toxic than the Star Trek fans and stuff like that. I don't know. Um, I just think you have so many different type of people star as Star Wars fans, so everybody wants something different. So they're 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 almost kind of like WWE fans in a way or something like that. 
And um, AEW fans are more like Star Trek fans because they kind of mostly know what they want. So it's not as much of a fight. And I think that that's an interesting comparison uh, when he said that on the podcast that Star Trek fans were more smart and Star Wars fans are more toxic. I don't think that any, I don't think, I don't like that. I don't really like to call people toxic. I don't think it's toxic. I think what it is is that Star Wars fans have so many different fans and different people that have different expectations, new fans, old fans, mediocre old fans, like whatever, uh, prequel fans, before the prequel, the original Star Wars fans, like myself. Um, and so I think that there's a lot of infighting and arguing and, and, and then there's agendas and different movies. And so like I think that that's why they have more fights, whereas Star Trek is more like, well, we know what Star Trek is for the most part, although recently we don't. So <laughs> that's another... I think he's, they're wrong there, but, uh, man, we could talk Star Trek all day. But, yeah, he said a lot of cool stuff on the podcast about trademarks and things like that, about how, you know, Starcade and Bash at the Beach, you know, he really wanted those back, or the Great American Bash, rather. Um, you know, I, I think he's right. He, say, he calls them Dusties. I think they're Dusties. I think they're WCWs. I think they're, you know, but w, what's Dusties and what's WCWs became WWEs. So that's the problem. And he bought up all these trademarks, Cody said, because he thought if he owned all these trademarks, maybe he could trade them for Starcade or something like that. I don't know, man. I hope that works out. It'd be nice, man. It'd be it'd be a nice gesture. It'd be a nice thing if, you know, but but Vince sees this probably as war, just like any other thing, you know, so that's not going to happen. But, you know, it's it'd be nice. It'd be a nice thing if Vince McMahon called him up and said, hey, you know what, man, what do you, what do you want? You want Starcade? You know, you want to have Starcade? Here you go, man. It's it's your dad's. You You deserve it now. Uh, yeah, give me those other names. Give me those other things, and we'll give you Starcade. We'll give you a Great American Bash. That will never happen, though. There's no chance in hell. Can you imagine, like, your your opponent has the names that they've created, like, All In and all that stuff, and you were to, like, let me go ahead and give you Starcade. Because right now you don't really have the equivalent of WrestleMania, although you do. All In is, like, your equivalent to WrestleMania, but people don't know that from the lineage. It's brand new. you got to build it up yourself. But handing over Starcade would be handing over a brand name that's, like, pretty important. And so, like, that's why I can just not see Vince McMahon doing it. I mean, I could see even... I mean, even if I was Vince McMahon, I'd be like, I don't know if I could do that. You know? I, if I was Vince McMahon, I might call Cody, though, and I might say, hey, listen, Cody, this is the bottom line. I would be a moron if I gave you the name Starcade. All right? It is your dad's. I believe that. But um, it's it's WWE's now because I bought what your dad... You know, your dad worked for me. You know, he would want it here. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. But Vince would never do that, and it just won't happen. I mean, but then there's a part of me that feels like I would call and say, you know what, ma'am? I hope you don't, um, hope it doesn't hurt my business by giving this to you. I feel like it does a little bit, but it's the right thing to do. Here's, here you go, here's Starcade. You know, I don't know. I don't know if I could do that. I don't know if I would do that. I might, though. I mean, I would. As a wrestling fan, I'd be like, this is yours, bro. Hey, listen, if you beat me, you beat me. This is the right thing to do. But that might be stupid. So I don't know what to tell you. Would somebody really do that? But yeah, I, I thought the podcast was was pretty good. Um, you know, mostly, I don't know what it's going to be like when Cody isn't there, because it was mostly about Cody, and they really, you know, pressed a lot on Cody to talk about a lot of things, obviously. So it's really going to matter on the guests. But I thought Aubrey, the great thing is Aubrey and Tony Schiavone really did a good job of being support role here. They really allowed Cody to open up and talk about things. And that's, it's funny I don't know if that's nervousness or they just don't really know or if they 100% know what they're doing. But they, they, they did what a lot of people mess up in podcasting when they first start. Even though Tony Schiavone is a broadcaster of many years, he's a veteran broadcaster. I don't know Aubrey's background with any of this stuff. Um, and, you know, Cody's held so many press conferences and podcasts and things like that that he's aware of, you know, kind of what to do. But... A lot of times people will talk over you or try to try to talk about themselves too much because that's how you, what you do in a casual conversation. You know, even I had to be careful not to do it. I, I told Cody right off the bat, hey, I'm a Star Trek fan. What do you think about Picard? I got to bring it up because um, I want to have a regular conversation, but you don't want to have too re much of a regular conversation because then people don't get to hear the interview or like the question or the interviews, rather the uh, the person you're interviewing. And so I thought Tony and Aubrey actually did a pretty good job here because we get a lot of information from Cody from him himself and from the questions that Aubrey and Tony Schiavone have for him. Um, so, yeah, they did a really pretty good job. I don't think that, I mean, they really just did a good job of putting over the, the, the guest, the guest that is Cody. 
it's a little weird, you know, that AEW has their own podcast, their own people are doing it. I think it'd be kind of cooler in a way if they had outside people doing it. Obviously, can I have a job, AEW? I mean, I'm waiting, AEW. You didn't hire me as an announcer. I could be doing your damn podcast. I'm just kidding. Um, yes, I'm self-plugging again. But yeah, maybe someone, they hire someone outside who could run these podcasts constantly. That'd be really fun. Insider information right after the shows in a podcast form or sit-down interviews or a guy running around the lot. You know, that, I don't know. That, that type of idea might be exciting. But this was recorded much in advance, recorded back in January. So... Like, this is old stuff. I think it's a little too old. I think it was two in the can. Probably should have gotten these together within three weeks to two weeks. Um, I mean, I guess that's close. If this was January 23rd or 27th, I forget the date. But, uh, you know, I guess it's about four or five weeks old now. But, yeah, it was a little bit old for my taste. I wish they had, you know, maybe this was two weeks ago. It would have been okay with me. But uh, either way, you know, they had their reasons. They probably got them in the can. They're going to release them. But it's a very good podcast. That was good. Maybe if you don't like Star Trek, you won't enjoy the first quarter of it. But after that, it still gets pretty exciting. Uh, I love I love Cody's honesty. I love him in interviews. Uh, shock factors out the window, but not really Cody, because it's completely not out the window. <laughs> I love that about Cody, man. I think I think people just love this guy. I think a lot of people do. Um, but anyway, there you go. Listen to that, Ricochet. What do you guys think? We talked about it earlier. Leave in the comments down below if you missed my other videos. They're popping up for you right now on your screen. These videos came out today and yesterday, and you might have missed them. So make sure you subscribe and you hit that notification button on the YouTube. And leave me a comment down below. I'm Joe Cronin. I'm in Boston, and I'm high on water. H2O, Ryan Waters. All right, we'll see you guys later. I'm on Twitter at CorruptedPod. Subscribe. Don't miss out on my daily wrestling content.